Good day to everyone. I'm David, and I will give a quick presentation on the work we have carried out to create a Python-based toolbox for story loss function generation. Before starting the discussion of the toolbox, let's have a look at the framework that is the basis for our goals. Performance-based earthquake engineering uh, is a framework for characterizing seismic risk by using terms more meaningful to stakeholders and practitioners. The pr primary objective of the framework is the prevention of loss of life and uh, as well as reduction of financial loss due to structural and non-structural damage. It also foresees the sustainment of continued operations following the seismic event. I'll not get into the nitty gritties of the framework as it is quite known within the community. <clears throat> Development of risk targeted design methods using collapse risk and or economic loss as primary design objective has necessitated the uh, for uh, to, to look for alternatives to PACT for a more simplified codification of these approaches. As mentioned, PACT is quite cumbersome to implement, which is particularly true when designing new buildings, where a lot of information might be missing and practitioners may be hesitant to carry out a full loss-driven design consisting of many trials and iterations. A simplified alternative to building specific loss estimation is the utilization of story loss functions and their consequent use in story-driven story loss assessment. The idea is to have a relationship between the structural response parameter to engineer or engineering demand parameters to economic losses or decision variables. These functions typically define monetary loss at the store level, and this is why they are termed store loss functions. They may potentially reduce the computational effort by use of ready-made loss functions to describe their repair costs over a predefined building inventory of damageable components in a simplified manner. They so have been in, uh, recently implemented in Silva et al. for steel buildings uh, in a European context, uh, whereas suitable options for reinforced concrete uh, buildings are still missing. <clears throat> Since we already mentioned that there is a need to creating simplified design frameworks that are in line with the primary objectives of performance-based earthquake engineering, it is important to know the development of the conceptual seismic design framework by O'Reilly and Calvi. It consists of three phases of seismic design process, that is the identification and sizing of physical structural solutions, be it a reinforced concrete bore or a frame or some other system, uh, design in detailing of individual members, and uh, the final optional step is the verification using pushover or nonlinear response history analysis. The conceptual seismic design laid the foundation for further development and adjustment of the framework to define more flexible approaches with the goal of attaining valid design solutions satisfying the performance objectives. An integrated performance-based seismic design, or in short, FABSD, was born, and uh, which uses mean annual frequency of collapse to ensure level of collapse safety and uh, expected annual loss limit to mitigate the excessive monetary losses. Both those values have to be set by the designer uh, to get the desired building performance. A suitable loss curve is initially identified to limit the expected annual loss, which is uh, characterized through, through uh, yeah, expected loss ratio and mean annual frequency of exceeding the limit state. It is defined through three limit states, that is the operational limit state, where onset of damage and accumulation of monetary loss is uh, uh, established, and it is defined through return period of 10 years and 1% expected loss ratio. The second limit state is the serviceability limit state, which is where the economic losses have to be controlled. And uh, finally, a collapse limit state where we have complete collapse of a structure and 100% of expected loss ratio is assumed. Uh, initially, uh, based on the SLS uh, point, the uh, design spectrum is identified and uh, which in conjunction with store loss functions is used to identify the feasible period range. <clears throat> Having identified the feasible period, initial period range to limit, limit economic loss at SLS, it is equally important to control the risk of structural collapse, unlike the previous iteration of the framework. A period between the already defined uh, limits is uh, selected and the expected backbone behavior and overstrength are first trialed by the designer. The SPO parameters are assumed, such as the spectral acceleration at yield, uh, initial second to yield period, the hardening and fracturing ductilities, and the post-peak softening ratio and residual strengths. For the initial estimation of these parameters, some uh, suggestions might be used from the literature 
or uh, uh, it, 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 I could I should mention that the through its iterative nature, if necessary, the framework will correct these assumptions by itself. Otherwise, for example, hardening ductility could be obtained based on the behavior factors from the codes, or fractional ductility will depend on the post peak clapping. Uh, rotation capacity which uh, of the reinforced concrete members which could be computed through methods developed by works of Hazelton or some other similar works and uh, all these parameters may be adjusted based on expert judgment and their structural capacity proportions which should not be too challenging to estimate and quickly refine without any excessive analysis being required. With this in mind the SPO2 IDA tool designed by Van Vastikos and Cornell uh, uh, is used to come up with a class fragility function of the structure uh, using the SPO shape already identified. This function will be uh, defined through in terms of median collapse capacity and record to record variability, assuming a log normal distribution. One, once it is uh, computed, it may be integrated with a hazard curve to get the mean annual frequency of collapse. So essentially, the, the goal is to optimize for spectral acceleration at yield and uh, an SPO curve shape to meet the target mark. <clears throat> the red shading in the uh, figure G is basically where all possible feasible design solutions may lay, lie. So essentially, this is the full IPBSD framework, and within this work, we will be concentrating on to fill the fill, um, filling the gap of creating a toolbox that is capable of generating soil loss functions based on provided building inventory information. To aid the IPBSD framework in this particular case, but also to, to aid uh, assessment design and assessment in general, an SLF estimation toolbox was developed. The framework uh, used here defines uh, soil loss functions based on component inventories and their classification into different component groups. For the proper estimation of repair costs associated with each component, consistent integration of component fragilities with repair costs at the store level is carried out. The toolbox consists of the following steps. Initially, the building should be characterized and then the components of the building sh uh, should be sampled and uh, grouped into different uh, uh, component uh, performance groups and uh, correlations between damage states of different components should be considered where necessary, uh, where necessary. Monte Carlo simulations based on that are uh, carried out to come up with damage states for each component for a number of uh, simulations. And the repair costs are estimated. Uh, based, uh, uh, and finally, regression is used to, to compute the store loss functions. <coughs> now let's have a look at each step more closely. In the first step of the framework, uh, we foresee the examination of characteristics of the building of interest. The user should have relevant information of the structure's height or number of stories, uh, global dimensions, occupancy type, and usage. And in many situations, the building's components will vary on a story by story basis. For example, the components will not necessarily be identical in the ground floor or roof level. And, uh, uh, and for example, in, uh, in a residential building, we might have a commercial commercial ground a ground story where the component inventory will uh, drastically vary from uh, the inventory from uh, residential or intermediate stories. And on the roof level, we might have an HVAC equipment or necessary equipment for the geared elevators, which are otherwise not uh, present present in other stories. In the next step, uh, the damageable component inventory can be created. There are several uh, so there are several methods to aid the user to gain insight into the possible distribution of components if it's not preliminary known, as is the case for new designs. The distribution which assume knowledge of mean and uncertainty of given component quantity quantity may be obtained from empirical and statistical data collected from existing buildings and surveys or based on expert opinion or personal judgment when uh, such information is unavailable. The inventory consists of structural and no structural components and story contents likely to be damaged, which contribute to the economic losses associated with required repair costs. In general, the component data inventory should have information on, on item types, quantity of each component, EDP sensitivity, and typology of each component. Once the component inventory has been identified, depending on the type of component, for example, be it structural or non-structural, 
and their sensitivity to a specific EDP, for example, uh, uh, peak storage rates or peak floor acceleration, the components are classified into performance groups. Three performance groups are established within this study. That is the PSD sensitive structural, PSD sensitive non-structural, and PFA sensitive non-structural components. However, I should I should stress it that this is not limited only to these performance groups, as uh, other performance groups may be considered as well using different uh, uh, different uh, EDPs. Essentially, components within a performance group will be assessed together for a mutual demand, and subsequent losses will be summed up to estimate the group's uh, store loss function. And in other words, losses from all components within the performance group will be tied to the same EDP. This is also important for further visualization where disaggregation of losses could be easier to visualize in the end. In the next step, uh, structural and structural components are, uh, that are sensitive to the same EDP may be grouped inside the same uh, performance group for, possible, uh, co for uh, consideration of possible correlations of different uh, performance groups. For example, if a specific non-structural component has been damaged, uh, piping system, let's say, which is in, in a, uh, or behind a wall, to repair the system, access should be first granted, which foresees the removal of the portion of the entirety of the undamaged wall. This is an example of uh, the group of two components with their fragility functions. <clears throat> for example, if the causation component, which is the, uh, the, uh, for, which is the piping system uh, in this example, has been assigned a uh, damage phase three, and the dependent component, which is the wall in here, yeah, has been assigned a damage state one, we have a situation where uh, to fully re repair the piping system, the wall has to be further damaged, or in other words, it will now be forced into damage state two, meaning that the related cost will be higher. Finally, with all this information known, we may carry out Monte Carlo simulations of damage states. This is the whole flow chart of the Monte Carlo simulations. I will not get into the details of it, as uh, it, it, it could take quite a lot of time. And this is also available in the document accompanying this presentation. So you could have a better look at it uh, at your own time. Uh, for each simulation and demonstrate, essentially repair costs are sampled for each component of the, uh, of the performance group. And each cost is added to obtain the performance uh, group's total loss for a given ADP. <clears throat> The algorithm samples damage states for each component at each EDP level and a specified number of simulations. Essentially, random value is generated between zero and one and representing the probability of being in a, in a certain damage state and then a damage state is assigned to a component based on its fragility function. With the damage state uh, assigned to the components for each Monte Carlo simulation, repair cost may be evaluated. For each component at each damage state, for each at each simulation, uh, 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 repair costs are assigned. Uh, repair costs are assigned based on the provided consequence function, as illustrated in the figure below uh, of the consequence function. Uh, based on the quantity of the component, the mean repair cost is obtained, which is used in conjunction with the coefficient of variation and uh, for generating a normal distribution of repair costs in, in, in the blue. Finally, a value of CIK, which is the cost, uh, is randomly sampled from the distribution. And this is how we assign a cost to a certain component at a certain simulation, at a certain simulation of Monte Carlo. Uh, at this state, uh, repair costs have been generated through Monte Carlo simulations and quantiles of interest may be quantified, preparing them for further regression. Finally, the store loss function for component loss may be identified through regression analysis. Uh, one one a function that may be used is the viable cumulative distribution that uh, gives a quite good fit for the, for the data. And the second one is the uh, model proposed by Papadopoulos, which is what we will use for the case study applications herein. And the accuracy of this, uh, accuracy of this uh, regression functions may be uh, uh, gauged by uh, certain accuracy metrics. Accuracy metrics. It's important to note that uh, due to the toolbox being open source and modular, anyone can add his or her regression functions and new accuracy metrics. <coughs> Finally, let's have a look at the storage functions generated and coefficients related to the fitting functions, as well as the accuracy metrics. 
uh, uh, actual symmetrics. As you can see, the maximum error is uh, much higher than the uh, cumulative error, which is because of some discrepancies very, at very small EDP values. However, the cumulative error marks a better performance, which is closer to zero, as the error tends to go down significantly once the EDP value is increased. <clears throat> the proposed framework yields as main output store those functions for each performance group, and the tool itself is available and uh, in, at the link given below, and uh, uh, is implemented through a Python script, which is implemented through a Python script. The figure on the left presents an overview of the main interface, interface of the toolbox, and the figure on the right illustrates the program structure of the entire store loss function generator. Finally, with all this developed, uh, it would be nice to see how it performs compared to the pod component based approach. A case study building of three stories with a reference area of 432 meters squares has been considered. It has a replacement cost of one or around 1.6 million euros and packed for use uh, euros and packed for used to conduct component based loss assessment uh, where a non directional conversion factor of 1.2 was considered <clears throat> was considered for components that are sensitive to both directions of uh, seismic action. Uh, also, epistemic uncertainty was not considered in this study. Uh, and the building was assumed to be located in, La in the site of L'Aquila on a steep plate, and therefore a uh, corresponding probability seismic hazard assessment was carried out. And so here you have the layout of the, uh, of the building, the plan layout of the building, as well as the elevation layout of the building. Performance grouping was applied and the regression equation by Papadopoulos shown before was used to carry out regression to paint the store loss functions. Those are some of the examples of the sort of functions developed through the proposed toolbox based on the component inventory defined. So the approach proposed by Ramirez and Miranda was used to perform stroller's function based loss assessment. The approach takes into account residual deformations to compute the probability of the building to be, to be demolished after a seismic event, even if it has not collapsed. The total cost uh, loss is the summation of the following con contributions. Losses due to building collapse, repair costs due to components being damaged, and losses resulting from demolition due to excessive, excessive residual risks. Uh, probability of demolition for this uh, case study uh, uh, of um, based on residual risk was assumed to be log normally distributed with a median of 0 0.015 and the logarithmic standard deviation of, uh, of 0 0.3. The, in here we have the assessment results. On the left we have the vulnerability curves and uh, uh, the total one and as well as the vulnerability curves associated with uh, uh, different loss uh, contributions. That is the non-collapse cost of non-structural, structural, structural and collapse and non-collapse demolition. So as you can see, in initially we have uh, losses, contribution of losses to the total one only from non-structural and non-structural uh, repair and uh, but you can see that the repair, structural repair cost is almost negligibly low compared to the non-structural one which is attributed to the fact that uh, the structure was designed following the modern seismic code uh, seismic code requirements as well as uh, having high capacity compared to the non-structural uh, components at higher uh, return periods, we can see that the collapse and non-collapse demolition costs start contributing uh, much more, while the repair costs have, have uh, decreased considerably. On the right side, we have the EAL disaggregated by cost type, along with uh, uh, an EAL uh, disaggregated by, by the cost type, Here, along with having the SLF-based and component-based approaches on each graph. <coughs> The AL was computed using store loss functions uh, was 0.63%, uh, which is slightly lower when compared to the expected annual loss computed following the component-based approach of FEMA B58, and which was 0.66%. This is uh, something that uh, the difference may be attributed to the fact that uh, uh, we, we had some discrepancies at the low, uh, at very low EDP values of store loss functions. And therefore, we see this uh, difference compared to the component-based approach. 
However, the, the variation is quite small and I think we can deem this quite uh, suitable and uh, well validated. Lastly, uh, this figure provides a relative contribution to the vulnerability curves as a function of the return period. And as you can see, at low periods, repair costs are dominating, and, uh, but you, you can see only repair costs due to non-structural non collapse because, uh, again, uh, if we had a structural, re a structural repair costs are associated with components which are well designed quite well following the modern seismic design code requirement requirements. At higher return period, we have the collapse and demolition contributions to expected loss ratios uh, increasing. And as you can see from both of the figures, uh, apart from uh, some uh, minor variations, the figures are quite similar uh, in, in a sense and uh, quite similar. And we, we saw it also in the previous figures in terms of having very similar EAL. Uh, Essentially, an open source tool was developed for the generation of storeless functions that may be used for assessment and design. It may consider correlations between different damage states of different components. These uh, storeless functions were developed for the entire case study building, accounting for response in both directions. Loss assessment was carried out to compare the component-based uh, and SLF-based approaches. A good EAL match was obtained which is 0.66% for component-based approach and 63.63% for the SLF-based approach. Close matching uh, is observed in the distribution of losses among performance groups, per intensity highlighting the validity of the tool and its accurate applicability for the intended scope. In addition to typical loss assessment on existing buildings, SLS may be used for new designs, for example, in the case of uh, IPBSD framework, and uh, finally, some future extensions may be made to the toolbox itself. Thank you very much for your attention. Take care.